Thomas on the line. Hi, Thomas. Welcome to Question and Answer. Uh, Marianne was just talking about a mediator. Is that something you've considered? Uh, I am agreeable to anything if it'll work. I, Thomas, I, I wish I had an easy answer for you, and, and sometimes things work and sometimes things don't work. Have you called your wife? Have you tried to speak to her, or your former wife, rather? Have you tried to speak with her? Have you tried to do something about the situation by conversation? Yes, I have tried, but every time I try to and talk to her, every time I disagree with her, if it doesn't go her way, she gets mad, rants and raves, hollers and screams, hangs up the phone, cusses and swears, and well, I I'm not a good speaker there, and I get it frustrated easily. I can certainly appreciate that, and you're not alone, Thomas, if that's any consolation. I think that you've still got to continue working at this. Don't let your child down. Your child probably wants to see you. He, can't, he may not be able to voice that at this point in time with his mother, but I'm sure that he wants to see you, and you need to fight for him. If that means going back to court, then so be it. If it means that you've got to try and find uh, a mediator, so be it. If it means that the official guardian's office is involved, so be it. But do something. Uh, your child will uh, thank you for it later in life, that's Mary for sure. Ann, can I interrupt here Absolutely. and ask you, I understand that Thomas has got a new wife. Now, does she have any rights at all in sort of bringing their, his other son into sort of a family fold? She has rights, and certainly under the Children's Law Reform Act, any person can make an application for custody and access. But I would suggest, however, that that's not perhaps the best way to deal with things. Uh, having too many people involved and too many actions going isn't going to accomplish what you want, Thomas. Certainly she can be a supporting person in the background from the point of view of is there another person there who is going to be part of all of this? Uh, that I think is important mm -hmm. and oftentimes the assessors and, and official guardian and so on will want to see who the backup people are. Are there grandparents? Are there new spouses involved? Right. Are there new uh, siblings and stepsisters and stepbrothers? That kind of thing. So she can do things that way. Right. Uh, but would I bring an action all on my own? No, I don't think that that's why. Okay, Thomas, have we been of any help to you today? Well, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Not really. Like, I don't feel that I am any... I don't feel like I know any more now there than I did a half an hour ago. Like, every lawyer, I don't have any money there to hire high-class lawyers. I, I, I can't afford it. And every lawyer I have tried aid there to talk to, nothing is under $200 an hour. Nothing is under $3,500 to start. I don't have that kind of money. And I'm at a loss. I want my son, but I do not have the available funds. And I appreciate that, Thomas, and I, I wish there, there was a more perfect answer for you. And I hate to think that uh, you walk away thinking, well, it's just another same answer. In this kind of a system, when you're dealing with children, there is no perfect answer. The law may not be fair. It may not activate for you what you want. I know that you may have applied to legal aid and been turned down, but go at legal aid again. If you truly cannot afford a lawyer, have the matter appealed with legal aid, saying, look, I can't afford a lawyer. I must see my son. And go at it that way. Try and make arrangements with a lawyer for some kind of a payment uh, plan so that you can uh, deal with it. You can also represent yourself in person. That is not within, outside the realm of impossibility. It's not necessarily the easiest way for you, but it certainly may be the less expensive way for you. And at least that way, uh, you can avenue and, and project yourself into the official guardian's office system and have a lawyer representing your child and see if that lawyer can somehow break the deadlock that you and your ex-spouse have been dealing with. And I wish there was a... It's not a perfect world. No, it's and not. It's and really it's really very sad. It's you sort of tangled up with a legal issue. And I think, Marianne, you've given Thomas some excellent advice and a lot of things to think about. And I hope you think about it too, Thomas, and um, good luck with it.
This next comment was left on our answering machine recently and has to do with everyone's favorite, hospital food. Hi, my name is Jeff Panster. My comment is that I think it's ridiculous that uh, Branson Hospital in Toronto serves roast beef to the patients in the cardiac ward. Uh, my uncle was in the cardiac ward a few months ago and he requested roast beef for lunch and that's what they gave him. I don't think they should give patients choices like that, especially with roast beef being one of them, because it is very bad for the heart. I hope that you'll consider doing a show on hospital food and some of the incompetence that's in hospitals. Thank you. Well, Carolyn, this one's definitely for you. Should a patient get to eat what they want to eat? No. <laughs> okay, that's plain. <laughs> Hypocrisy said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine your food. It drives me crazy when I hear stories like this or interviews with people who just had a heart replacement or a bypass surgery, and they say, I can't wait to have a hamburger and pop. Don't we know by now that these foods are causing the problem and clogging up the arteries? And I'm paying for, for part of this surgery bill, too. So I don't like it at all. Well, Carolyn, I have Jeff on the line now. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to Q&A. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, is your uncle doing better? Uh, yeah, he's doing okay. In spite yeah. of the roast beef and so on. We'll let you go ahead and talk to Dr. Dean. Hi. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, does milk cause a calcium deficiency? Well, I don't think I can go into that, Jeff. That's a pretty hot topic. Um, let me approach it from calcium supplementation. That's, that's a real issue in terms of, um, say, osteoporosis with women. All women now think that when they age, they're going to have thin bones. And you see calcium is being pushed as the only treatment for osteoporosis. So what you have to remember is there's magnesium involved and maybe a dozen other nutrients and other crucial issues like exercise and sunlight. The astronauts didn't lose bone just because of low gravity, but, but mainly because of uh, lack of full-spectrum lighting. So um, when you talk about calcium uh, itself causing a, a deficiency, um, I think of Tums that are being pushed by a lot of doctors as a treatment for, for uh, calcium deficiency. That's an antacid and it lowers your, lowers your stomach acid and causes malabsorption. Thank you, Carolyn. Sorry, Jeff, but we're out of time. Well, that's Q&A for this week. Mary Ann Carolyn, thank you both for joining us again. To all of you out there, remember to get out that new video camera that you got for Christmas and take some questions for us, please. It's not only nice to meet you, you know, but it really helps our experts sometimes to see the problems that they're dealing with in some cases. So please keep those questions coming. Our mailing address is Question and Answer, Box 200, Station Q, Toronto, M4T, 2T1. The Q&A fax number is area code 416. 484-4519. To call our 24-hour answering machine, dial 1-800-668-1467, and please remember it is a toll-free number. As usual, everyone who had questions answered on tonight's show will get one of these fabulous Q&A t-shirts. And for those of you with a health question, a bonus. Carolyn's book, When You Can't Reach the Doctor, published by Perfect Pitch. That's Q&A. Remember, it's your show, so use it. I'm Matt Sue Anderson. Good night. New Year's resolutions. Carolyn. I'm working on a cure for AIDS. Good stuff. Marianne. 1991, my husband and I reconfirmed our wedding vows. Hello, I'm a senior citizen and I was wondering when the